it didn't stop there, okay? From there, he took these two and he crossed them, okay? And then what did he find out? When he crossed these two, he found out that these two um, parents would give a three to one ratio. Three of them would be purple, one would be white. How did that happen? Let's take a look at a Punnett square. So from the last time we said both parents were heterozygous. So let's do a Punnett square here. When both parents are heterozygous for purple, what do we do? The first thing that we need to do is, like we said, figure out the alleles, okay? So for purple, we said it was going to be capital P. And then for white, we said it's going to be lowercase p. Parent one. We got a number, the step two is determine each geno, parent's genotype, okay? So parent one, both parents are heterozygous. So heterozygous means different. They're going to be capital and lowercase. Since both parents are heterozygous, parent two is gonna be the same. Heterozygous. Step three says draw the Punnett square. And place the parents onto the top or the side. Now since parent one is heterozygous, we'll place that. And parent two is heterozygous, we'll place that on the left. Okay? We'll make it a different color so you can see. Okay? So let's take a look at this. Like I said, you take bring down one of the alleles and to the left of the allele, okay? Left of the box. So here, here we have something different. Here we have, we, all, we should always put the capital letter first, okay? So here we have a capital letter that's represented from the left, and then we have a lowercase letter represented from the top, okay? Here we have, here we have the capital letter, so we're gonna put it first, and we have the lowercase letter. P. Here we have both lowercase p's. Okay. So this is a little bit different from the other Punnett squares we've seen. Let's take a look at their genotypes. Okay. Now I have different genotypes here, or different combinations of letter letters. Here I have homozygous dominant. So I'm going to write homozygous dominant. How often do I see it? I only see it one out of four times. I don't see two capital P's anywhere else. So it happens one out of four times, or if I were to put it into a fraction, 25%. Another thing that I see differently is here, we have heterozygous. And I see that heterozygous happens twice, okay? So if we take a look, heterozygous, it happens two of the four times, or if we were to put that into percentage, 50%. And the last one, we have to homozygous recessive. And that only happens, I only see homozygous recessive, two lowercase p's, one out of the four boxes, or 25%. So those are your genotypes. Let's take a look at phenotypes. Well, the physical traits, there's only purple or white. Let's figure this out, okay? This, homozygous dominant, it has at least one capital P. This one is purple. Okay, purple. This one, this is heterozygous, it has at least one capital P. Because it has one capital P, it'll override the recessive allele. This will be purple. So is this heterozygous? As long as it has one capital P or dominant allele, this is purple. So... This one doesn't have a capital P, not purple. So I have three out of four times, it'll be purple flowers. Three out of four or 75%. Well, how about this one? This one is, has two recessive alleles. And we said if it has recessive alleles, it's white. So here we have flowers. It happens one out of four times or 25%.
And that's what happened when he took two of these um, pick, uh, offspring and he crossed them, he came up to a three to one ratio. Three times out of four times, it would turn out to be the dominant um, color. And then one out of four times, it turned out to be the recessive color, okay? So what you're gonna be doing is you're going to um, continue the rest of the activities and make sure you turn in your um, work.